To be able to share beaver dam with three other women who are equally as passionate about hunting and conservation, it was just such a pleasure. The EU has been showing us what we can do, and it's that can-do spirit that I believe in. Don't forget, Ducks Unlimited. Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Welcome again to Ducks Unlimited Television. I'm your host, Ainsley Beeman. Today's episode comes from the Mississippi Delta, a place rich in waterfowling history and tradition. We'll be enjoying good times at the famed Beaver Dam, Nash Buckingham's old stomping grounds. Sit back as I join Mike Boyd, his son Lamar, Christine Thomas, Jan Young, and Carrie Lingo for what might be among the greatest duck hunts of my life, right now on DUTV. We got to start it off at the Blue and White, which is this little diner here in Tunica. It's just kind of a part of the duck hunting culture here. If you go in there, you're, it's going to be packed with duck hunters in the morning. We were thrilled to be there. The food was excellent, and it was just a really fun experience. It runs a lot better when it's 65 instead of 8. It's our second morning here at Beaver Dam and it is cold and clear and we've already got a couple of birds down. We're having a great time so far. I can tell you one thing, you'll never meet four girls more excited about being in nine degrees. Good shot, Carrie. Awesome. Good job. Love 1926 Made in America. <laughs> the gun that Carrie shot this morning was a 34 inch D grade Parker. And I told her, I said, this is not the gun, but I said, it is a gun like Nash used before he ever got the famous bow whoop. She was texting her husband, telling her about it, and he was pretty envious that she was A, at Beaver Dam, and B, shooting a Parker. So I got a kick out of that. It's good to get you to shoot it, and you shoot it well. Thank you very much. You Made in America. <laughs> Definitely got one that time. That was really cool. <laughs> Y'all are being rough on them. <laughs> 
When faced with extreme cold conditions, which isn't something that's very common in Mississippi, to keep our water open, it's really important for that to happen in order to achieve success. So when we woke up this morning, we really didn't know what to expect. We were dealing with single digit temperatures. Ice was definitely a possibility. Thank goodness the wind had blown all night last night. So we didn't have too much to deal with today. Day two was brisk. Talking to Lamar, he was really optimistic about it because a lot of the places around will freeze up when it gets this cold. And we certainly had a lot of ice to deal with this morning, but he had told us that when that happens, the birds will come in to places like Beaver Dam, you know, where there's deeper water. And he was certainly right. Shoot him. It is so neat to meet Christine Ainsley and Carrie and able to share that love of the outdoors. Women hunters are so needed. In my opinion, we could get them out there so much easier if we just tell them about that sunrise that we saw this morning. There are some hard things, but it is so worth it. I've heard about Christine and I was so thrilled to have the opportunity to meet her. She's somewhat of a pioneer for women in the outdoors. She started this organization, Becoming an Outdoors Woman, and I have so much respect for her heart for that because I am an outdoors woman and I'm definitely very passionate about introducing other women to the outdoors. So to be able to spend time with someone who has taken so much time out of her life to actually invest and make sure that young women like myself get to experience these things. It's just a real pleasure. Well, the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program is an educational outreach program that's in more than 40 states and several Canadian provinces, and it's weekend workshops that provide a safe and comfortable atmosphere for women to try different outdoor activities. So when you started Becoming an Outdoors Woman, how, like, what was your turnout the first go around? We did the first workshop. We didn't have anything. We did an article on it in the Sunday really? Milwaukee Journal and the next day three people couldn't keep okay. up with answering the phone. When we first started out we didn't know if anybody even, did any women yeah. even want to learn how to do this and then we, I think we answered that question mm -hmm. in two days. Hey, take him. For too long, 
hunting has been seen as a good old boys club, but that's changing. Today, more women are becoming interested in the outdoors, hunting and fishing, and conservation. The number of women hunters has grown to around 11% of our total hunting population. Women are getting outdoors for a variety of reasons, and these include new programs to introduce them to the outdoors, clothing and other products designed especially for women, and an interest in local, organic, and healthy sources of meat. Respected female hunters serve as role models in print, TV, and online. They send the message that it's okay to be a woman and a hunter. In fact, hunting is one of the most rewarding experiences you can share with your family and friends. At Ducks Unlimited, we welcome women to our organization and our events. Hunters are our most passionate conservationists, and whether they're women or men, hunters will be critical in helping us solve our most daunting conservation challenges. Just up the road from Beaver Dam, Bass Pro Shops has opened its newest store inside the iconic Memphis Pyramid. Thanks to the generosity of Bass Pro Shops founder, Johnny Morris, Ducks Unlimited has created a waterfowling heritage center inside the store. In this area, we have an assortment of hand-carved duck calls, working decoys, decorative decoys, bronzes, and paintings from several artists. In the Ducks Limited Story Gallery, visitors can learn about Ducks Limited's history through its beginnings in the 1930s, through its work throughout Canada, United States, and Mexico, and to its conservation efforts today. In the Waterfowling Heritage Gallery, you can see items from the market hunting era, such as the punt gun, battery, and gunning light, as well as the history of the decoy, from the Native American style to the style we use today. In this area, you can learn all about Duxland's efforts to conserve over 13 million acres in waterfowl habitat. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of the Waterfowling Heritage Center. So Mike and Lamar are both really passionate about shooting and owning classic guns and the third day was especially unique for us because they brought some for all of us to try and we were just thrilled that they actually gave us an opportunity to use something that they treasure so much. Thank you. Over right. Over right. Shoot him. So coming into this hunt, I heard that I was going to get to hunt with Jan, who is a strong DU volunteer, and I was so pumped about that. She is certainly an extremely passionate conservationist. I have so much respect for the work that she's done for Ducks Unlimited. Well, knowing that Ducks Unlimited gives back to the ducks, they always are conservation-minded, and that is so important. You know, I came for the cause and definitely have met the most amazing people and stayed around because of that. Some of my best friends are part of Ducks Unlimited and I never would have met them. Coming fast y'all. Right here. Shoot him on the left right here. Dee and I found ourselves hunting in flooded timber many times, and it's great fun, but it takes a bit of extra preparation. First, the dog has to know how to work off a water stand, and second, the dog has to be able to stop, cast, and handle on the water. And now we've got all kinds of obstacles in the way. We have trees, we have logs to negotiate. Birds are moving on the waters, tucking in behind logs that Deke can't see. But now when he hit the whistle and he turns back and look, I put a tree between myself and his visual. 
So we have to think about how we stop and handle. So it takes practice and it's not the best place to start on water. Much better to start on land than move those skills to the water. Now here we are in the perfect conditions to try to teach your dog to handle on the water. Don't do it on the water, you can't make adjustments, but I've still got my trees and I have my obstacles. I'm gonna put Deke out in one location and cast him to another. Then when he perfects this, you take it to the water. Don't try it on the water unless you're real fond of swimming. Deke. Deke. Get on. We make the stop, we make the cast, just as we will on the water. We'll practice this several times in several timbered type situations on ground, and then we're off to the water. Deep. You're gonna to learn to do things with a duck call that a duck can't do. People say, well, why would you wanna learn that? Well, it's real simple. If a duck can't hear you, to even turn and look your way, they're gonna fly on by and they never even see you. So you're gonna make sounds louder and longer than an actual duck can make when they're at a distance great enough that they can't hear everything you say. That's where a hunting style hail call comes from. That's where your comeback call comes from. And it's your actual greeting calls. And a hunting style hail call is almost like counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten. No duck that's ever lived can do that. People say, why would you do that? Because when the ducks are downwind, maybe 200, 300, 400 yards away, and your sound will carry, and they're flying by, you gotta get their attention, make them turn and look your way and see your decoys, or hear that sound and come to it. Because they're not gonna hear it all. Learn to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. And it's a descending cadence. Learn to do that, and you're starting to get on your way toward calling ducks. Duck Tactics has been presented by Buck Gardner Calls, champion of champions. Shoot him now. We're looking at the third day and that's our final day. The low tonight being as low as it's planned to be, we'll have even more ice to contend with. And I expect we'll see some more big groups of ducks. I think it's gonna be good. We'll take advantage of some opportunities early and we'll try to get these ladies a last good hunt in and get them on their way back home. We got to ride around with Mike and see where Nash Buckingham, CMPCB, and then also Horace's house. It was just really neat to see and experience that and you know learn more about the history and tradition that is here in Beaver Dam. When I met Carrie, she was so much more than an Olympian. Hear her excitement for every little thing. She's got quite the personality and we've had some really good laughs over the past few days. After competing in the 2008 Olympic Games, I rekindled my love with the outdoors. The first duck that I was able to take with my father and his friends was such a memorable experience for me. I just really hope to share that with my sisters and my friends.
Please care. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes! I know, great shooting. That was awesome. Lots of action. Good shooting. Nice shooting, ladies. What fun it was to experience such a rich and storied location, the famed Beaver Dam with these great people. If you missed some of it here on the Pursuit Channel, check it out at ducks.org. And see you next week on DUTV.